Welcome back to your day. Local theater is alive and well after two slow years due to the pandemic. Drama and music has returned to the Croswell Opera House in Adrian, Michigan, and this weekend's production is Company by Stephen Sondheim. Director Megan C. Hakes joins us with a preview. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So uh, Stephen Sondheim, uh, okay, you have to love him. Um, and he took a little bit of a different take with Company. Tell us a little bit about what sets Company apart from maybe some of the typical sh Broadway shows folks have seen. Sure. So Company was originally written in 1970, and it follows the main character of Bobby, who is a single, sort of a a, a womanizer, nightlife loving guy in New York City, but he has all of these friends who are married. And so he is sort of, he, it's all framed around his 35th birthday. Mm -hmm. And so at the age of 35, he's sort of feeling that societal pressure to get married. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. the story is not told like necessarily in a chronological, like linear fashion. It's more like vignettes that are tied together with Sondheim's beautiful music. And interesting themes here, you know, when we're talking about marriage and divorce and, you know, uh, all of these societal issues, uh, this was a big deal at that time. And so over the course of the decades, however, uh, things have been changed and updated with company. Yes, they have. And actually, that's part of what really interests me about the piece in general. So it was written in the 19, in 1970, and so it was written sort of for a baby boomer audience. And so that societal pressure was very much there, I think, for baby boomers. And then when you move down to the next generation, Generation X, which is me, we started to sort of question that need to get married, and singlehood started to be more embraced. And then you go down farther to millennials and they continued questioning, but then also maybe couldn't afford to get married. Mm -hmm. And then you get to Gen Z's and Gen Z's are, I think that they are thinking we have more important things to worry about than that societal pressure to get married. Um, so I find that's something that we have tried to explore of like the different versions of marriage and singlehood and whether it's okay to want to be married or whether it's okay to want to stay single. So this show can really, uh, depending on, it uh, doesn't really matter which generation you are, uh, right. you will be able to identify with this. And uh, Stephen Sondheim uh, passed away, unfortunately, uh, somewhat recently and on Broadway uh, with his uh, permission, uh, they were able to flip the script a little bit and a woman became the lead. They were, and I think that part, I mean, I don't want to put words in that director's mouth, but I think one of the ways to update it is that Nowadays, a 35-year-old male is not necessarily feeling the same societal pressure that they were in 1970, but I think that women are still feeling that. Um, that sort of, uh, uh, oh, you're a spinster if you're not married by 35. And so to me, that make, really makes a lot of sense in order to update the piece to 2022. Yeah, and as you mentioned, it, it seems like that has been accomplished over the years. So for folks who come out and see the show at the Opera House at the Croswell, uh, what can they expect? What do you hope they walk away? What do you hope they gain? I mean, there, I know that there's a, some really incredible music, of course, first of all, in the show. <laughs> There is, so even if you're not familiar with company, the, the musical in general, I promise you, you will hear a song that you have heard before. Um, there's Being Alive is in there, this wonderful song called The Ladies Who Lunch, which is a That's musical. That's my favorite. <laughs> I'm sorry? That's my favorite, Ladies yeah, Who Lunch. <laughs> it's such a wonderful song. And the music is so beautiful, and each of the marriages that Bobby comes in contact with, I think people will find a way to relate to at least one of them. They're all different and unique and beautiful and wonderful and our cast is so talented. It's been a real joy to work with them. And it's great to, to get back out to the theater and enjoy that and sit back, relax, enjoy ourselves and you know, maybe be enlightened a little bit too uh, and uh, take something away. Uh, for folks who want to come out, uh, where can they get tickets? They can find tickets at croswell.org. Very easy. There you go. You open on a Friday. That's right. That's right. And we close on Sunday. So you only get one weekend yeah. to come see us. You got to hurry out and get those tickets. All right. Thank you, Megan, for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. 
Thank you so much. Have you a good bet. day. You too. Take care. Well, Bye -bye. first in black and white, then in color. Regardless, you knew the blood dripping from the beautiful young woman's neck was red. We're going to have more on that story coming up in just a moment. Stay with us. <laughs> Yeah. 